Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Expert Division in the Americana Classic Tournament. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic, so let's go. Here on hole number one, we're going to play this one downhill. 10% extra is needed and I have pulled out my Apocalypse level 4. Why do I play with an Apocalypse instead of my extra level 8 that I normally use? This is the reason! the curl. We do need a lot of curl here due to the wind that is pointing left to right and I'm gonna talk about what we need to do if we do have an extra mile or a Thor's hammer and don't ex uh, possess any apocalypse. I'm using a power 3 ball because then I can go with max overpower. I like to do that instead of going in s with something in between and I'm using 5 bars of top spin and max side spin to the left in terms of spin adjustment because the thing that I'm looking for is to get my ball down there uh, and rather go a little bit long than go a little bit short. If you do have an extra mile or a Thor's hammer you will have to go with a power hook and uh, and that is because we do have a wind left to right and it's going to be very very tricky for you to get the right amount of curl and the ball to bounce at the correct position uh, place when it comes to going with a regular curl shot going towards the pin. I will cover that power hook with the extra mile especially further down in the tournament, most likely already during the qualifying round in a special video just for that because I know that that will mean a lot for players. But if you do have an apocalypse and I'm talking now all the way down to level 2 then you could choose that one, use the maximum amount of curl and then go over. If you're having an apocalypse 5, 6 or 7, then you will have to reduce a little bit of overpower and then go from there. Hole number 2, and now we do have a par 3 where we are going to go with the sniper. 20% downhill while we are when we are playing from the second tee. And I like to play with a kingmaker here as it has wind resistance 3. So that's the reason I'm using the Kingmaker. We don't really need distance, but we do want to have the uh, the wind resistance 3. I'm looking for the spot with my ball guideline. So the ball guideline should be pointing slightly before the pin uh, in terms of like distance to compensate for the extra push that we're going to get from the bounce due to its tailwind. Playing this one 1-2-1 one, one, uh, from this position. And uh, then we're going to uh, bounce there on the fringe and we come a bit high. But you can also see, like, as I said, 20% extra was is not really one-to-one -one from that position. Sure, I get close, but I want to bounce a little bit further down. So we will have to add one ring and really play it 20% extra and not just going with the one-to-one -one method. Hole number three, here we're going to play 10% uh, downhill for the drive and I'm going to use a max side spin to the right and also four and a half bars of top spin. You can go with more top spin if you want to but I rather want to have a little bit more side spin to the right than I would be having top spin because here we do want to go uh, around the trees and here of course Apocalypse is going to be a better club for you to use but I'm using the extra mile and the extra mile level 8 do have enough curl even though it's on the on the edge there to be a little bit too little in my opinion. We do aim up as for uh, the, the ball to bounce over here. We do want to adjust our rings and one once we are done that we do need to push up our target into max position again because we need all the distance that we can get for the second shot here now we do have a very like a perfect spot for an albatross here we do have a wind that is basically not straight tailwind but it's not a tough wind to to approach the pin with so we do need to first have in mind that we do need to over adjust the second shot with 10% as well while we are approaching the pin and then we're going to get close. But here you can see the problem with if you go too much to the left and not trying to get into the right or not having enough curl then you're going to have the trees to the left in your face and then you will have to curl it around and that's going to be super tricky to get any consistency with that type of uh, approach. So our turn and here I'm going to play with my short iron and I'm choosing the thorn because I do like to play with a thorn but definitely for those of you who play with a hornet stick with a hornet I think a short iron should be the club that you feel like that you 
feel the most comfortable with. Now I'm using three bars of backspin. Here it is important that once adjusting here on the green, it is important that we leave the tip of the ball guideline approximately one square before the pin. You can see I'm, I'm basically at the pin here now and we need to back up at least half a square to a square more from the position we are now. So approximately one square before the pin and then we're going to uh, uh, adjust our reins and take our shot. The problem we have now though when we are uh, adjusting so close towards the pin with our target is that this ball will go straight at the pin but we will bounce over. So if we wouldn't, if we wouldn't be, uh, if we would be backing up a little bit, then that ball would definitely be in the hole. Now I would definitely say, uh, and I would be not surprised to see a lot of albatrosses for hole number three. Hole number four. Here I'm using four and a half bar backspin. I'm using one bar of side spin to the right here as a start, but I'm in the end I change. I take away the side spin. That at least is the plan and having four and a half bar backspin only. You can see there in the end that I l had just a smidge of side spin to the right and I'm gonna remove that here in the end. Playing it in between medium and maximum distance uh, with a 20% over adjustment. And for those of you that do want to go with just a general method here, one to one plus 1.2 is what you can do with a sniper. So you add 1.2 to the wind and that will be the amount of ring num rings you're going to adjust. You can see we got very close. We also, in the end, need to use a little bit of side spin to the left, just a smidge to the left. And then we're definitely going to see this one be very close uh, towards the pin. We do have a, actually, I would say this is the best win we could get. And I think the sniper fulfills its purpose here by having that excellent ball guideline and the accuracy to help us um, help us with this hole. And I think overall in expert playing with, or let's say the par, par threes in expert is going to be the key. We will see a lot of eagles on the par fours. So I think getting a one or two hole in ones as well is definitely going to separate you from the others. Our opponent plays basically the same type of way, coming in a little bit too much to the right as well. And I think we just need to make sure that we're putting ourselves in um, close to the pin and then it might drop. Now we do have a wind, a tailwind northwest and I'm going to play on the left side here. And the reason I'm playing to the left side is that the angle playing directly at the pin from the right side is going to be not good. So therefore I'm choosing the left side because then that is the better angle towards the pin than the, than the two. So that is what I really looking at, like where, from where is the best wind angle towards the pin? And there is where I do decide to play. Now it's going to be on the left side and uh, we're going to play 20% downhill still as we would be playing on the right side using as much side spin to the left possible and two and a half bar top spin. You can play with a quarterback here if you want to, but I feel confident enough when we do play with an extra mile so we do have the distance and don't have to struggle with that. Once getting over there, we do have an open shot towards the pin with a sniper, but we do want to have a power three ball as we do need the distance from that position. We are like logically going to have a, a, um, a longer shot from the left than we would be having from the right. But once again, if you do not feel confident with the drive going over to the left, and I said that every time, then please do play to the right Take yourself over the rough, and of course don't hit good right, but g take yourself over the rough and then approach the pin there from distance. But don't use any wind resistant balls in this type of uh, format like a wind 5. You do want to have the chain win to be able to bounce over. Now you can see we do need the power 3. Sure, we can reduce and play with a power 1, power 2, but I like the power 3 here to actually make sure that we do have enough distance to reach. And I'm looking first at, you know, uh, playing without any spin, but then I'm changing, playing with a little bit of spin instead, so I can move up my target a little bit more and be more closer to max distance. Because if we are closer to max distance, it's going to be max numbers, and it's going to be easier to know how many rings we're going to have to adjust. 
20% extra for the second shot here as well. And we're going to adjust this one 20% extra for max distance, which is 1 to 1 plus 2. You can see here the ball is coming in very nicely and it gets to roll very nicely towards the pin and getting it super, super close another day that would have been in the hole. So that was a nice one. Hopefully we can replicate and go from that uh, left side once uh, another time as well. Hole number six, here it's quarterback time and I'm going to play this one with a power three ball. I'm playing with a Titan. Sure, if you do want, to play with more wind resistance you choose a kingmaker if you do want to play with an extra mile you could choose a katana or a quasar instead but i think the quarterback here with small guideline is is super and it will help you a lot so adjusting for maximum distance with a sorry with a 15% uh, over adjustment I'm playing one to one plus one so 15% is what i'm using as an over adjustment here from the second tee and now I'm using max top spin as much side spin to the right possible. And the reason I'm using the side spin to the right is to give myself the kick back into the right once we hit the ground. So we're not bouncing directly out into the rough, not thinking about the um, uh, not thinking about the extra push that we're getting from the wind. Sure, you could go with some slight counter curl to the right just to make sure that you're keeping yourself on the fairway. But in the end, the side spin is what is going to help there. And I'm only looking for my ball to get over there to the fairway. I'm not really looking for a way to get as super close to the green possible because I rather want to play with a short iron. I rather want to have a, a thorn or a hornet in minimum slash maybe medium distance towards the pin. Then we know we're gonna be close and then it's up to us to find the adjustment and dial it in from distance. And here, we are going to play with the thorn and i've always played with the thorn but of course play with the hornet if you feel that you rather want to do that i'm going to be in the minimum distance of my club i want to use the fairway not the green as a landing position reason i want to do that is that the green has been very glitchy towards me which means that the ball is sometimes coming in hot sometimes coming in short and therefore i'm using the fairway just before the green it has really been uh, helping me getting a consistent bounce and roll towards the pin. Now I'm using a minimum distance with a 10% uphill adjustment. So we're going to subtract 10% from our adjustment. I slightly missed this one to the left. That's because I don't compensate from the for the push I'm gonna get from the, uh, the wind that we're having, the crosswind. So there we need to add approximately half a ring to our adjustment or just add uh, or maybe play just 5% uphill instead so we kind of add into the extra push that we're having from the from the wind now we're going to have a starting position here where we are going to uh, use the red ring by the rough with the ball guy line towards the pin the thing that we need to change here though and I'm gonna come to that in the end because you're gonna see what's gonna happen first I do make a mistake here playing this one medium distance plus 10 so here we do not need to add anything. We need to just play it as it is. Medium distance with nothing extra. Now when I do over adjust this shot, combined with aiming at the pin, we're gonna miss high. We do have a nice roll towards the pin. We're gonna miss high, that kind of just makes sense. But the thing that we need to do is that we do need to adjust with a red ring with the ball guideline pointing towards the pin, back up so the tip of the ball guideline is showing approximately one square below the pin. And from there you're using just a medium distance with nothing extra. And then you're going to be super close if not in the hole. Our opponent is using an extra mile and I think, I, I haven't said it, but please use the driver that gives you the best ball guideline, the best accuracy. If it's not if you are not having a quarterback in level 8 plus then you use the rock if the rock is having a better a better ball guideline than you're having on the quarterback because the ball guideline is so helpful that you know with extra mile here it's almost impossible for him to read how far will this ball roll if he's not really uh, really having that in mind since before Hole number eight, here we're gonna go for the green. And here I'm actually going to give you a slight different adjustment when it comes to when I do stretch out. 
The thing that I do want you to do here is that I do want you to add five bars to the top spin, as much side spin to the right possible, which is four and a half, stretch out and adjust from overpowered position. The thing that we do need to do though, is that we do need to over adjust this shot 30%. The reason I want you to over adjust it 30% and not 15 as it normally is, is because we do need to compensate for the tailwind that we're having, like the extra push from the tailwind, combined when we stretch out our target into overpower position, we're going to adjust the club from a longer position, which means that the ball is going to be affected more by the wind. So once when I went over this shot and also made some other shots, which I unfortunately didn't you know, record, but then I played with a 30% uh, elevation adjustment downhill and that went perfectly fine. So power five ball, stretch out, adjust from overpower position and make a max distance number with a 30% extra adjustment. Then that's going to be perfect for you. And once again, the elevation is normally 15 on this one, but the all, all from, you know, stretch out into overpower, for from the tailwind situation we're having all of those makes us have to add more to compensate for for the extra push uh, and for the overpower position that we are in and now you know uh, we get into the rough we get into the sand but i would choose that situation uh, every single day before going and lay up to the right side and have a short iron towards the pin and crosswind so here we at least have a straight wind uh, going towards the pin we need to hit the ball perfect if we do the ball is going to go in the hole which is nice but of course if you can make that drive a little bit better then at least in the rough would be as a worst case scenario where the ball will drop and here you can see uh, the replay of it that i'm actually adding here i'm not having the complete uh, adjustment displayed but here you can see when i played it with a 30 percent extra I bounce here on the fairway very nicely, we compensate for the tailwind, so we bounce on the fairway in the rough, we roll out, and this ball could in another day be an hole-in-one. We will see people making hole-in-ones in expert on this one, not maybe a lot, but there will definitely be some. Here on hole number 9, we're going to use the X-Mile level 8, we're going to use a power 3 ball, which is going to be a kingmaker, we're going to stretch out once again, we stretch out to visualize the second bounce where it's going to be. From there, we do adjust our rings. 15, 1, 5, 15% extra in terms of adjustment. And then we're going to land it very nicely on the Faroe Island here. And from here, we do have a nice and easy sniper to go towards the pin. So 15% for the drive. And the tailwind that we're having now, of course, kind of like, hmm, oh, it's a, it's a fun wind. And I... And I totally understand if there will be people trying to go for green in one. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a tough one to, to do, of course, but you might put yourself in a position where uh, you're gonna get yourself at least closer. So there is a way to play a more aggressive drive. I want in the playthrough at least giving you a way to secure the eagle because that's what we're looking for here. I think we do have enough opportunities on the other holes where I think playing this one too aggressively we might find ourselves in a spot where we will have a hard time to even save the eagle if we do mess up. So now for the second shot, we need to play this one way more downhill than it has been before. 20% downhill. And you can see that I'm trying to use max backspin as I did in pro, but I'm not noticing, or let's say like this, I didn't shake. Uh, where my target was in terms of distance of my club. So I'm going to adjust down into my long iron range, which is going to completely mess, mess me up here because I only have half of the time left of the clock. So then I need to try a different spot. And then in the end, I do decide to use an underpowered uh, position with the sniper, which is not, of course, something that we do want to do but i feel here once again there is a rough bump there is a sand bump but honestly i don't think those are in play that much not yet at least so here play secure the eagle take it and if you do drop an albatross on this one consider yourself very fortunate because not many players will do that there will be way more birdies than it will be albatrosses on this hole number nine so this was the playthrough for expert if you do want to get the updated text guys uh, with detailed instructions of every shot in this in this um, tournament 
sign up on patreon.com slash golf clash tommy if you do have any questions let me know in the comment section below as well video sponsored by golf clash and play demic good luck in the tournament